I'm Mary from Growing Puppies. I'm the Schnoodle Breeder and I'm going to talk in this video about how to prepare for your trip taking your puppy home. So if you are have a short ride then a good thing to bring is a puppy carrier. It's never too early to start getting your puppy used to traveling in the car in a safe carrier. Um, but it's also good if you have someone to come with you because if the puppy gets nervous or scared, it would be better for staff that someone was there to pick up the puppy and comfort it rather than have it be stressed all the way on your ride home. So um, it's good to have a towel. You can put that at the bottom of the puppy carrier or you can just put it on your lap and then if the puppy gets sick or has an accident, you have some a towel to help keep yourself clean. And um, roll of paper towels, not a bad idea. This is a precautionary. Um, Ziploc bag to put any soiled uh, towels or pee pads in. Um, you don't normally need a pee pad on a very short trip. I usually uh, will have the puppies ready for you so you don't he doesn't have to go potty right uh, right away on a short trip um, you if you have them anyway you can bring them but they're usually not needed on a longer trip you definitely need the pee pads and you will definitely be put in the bag usually a puppy I don't I don't I don't expect that people should be like stopping at every restaurant for the puppy to go potty that usually doesn't work anyway what I have discovered when I drive a long distance with a puppy is that by the time the puppy needs to go potty there wouldn't be time to get off to find that next rest stop and to get off and it wouldn't be safe just to pull off the road so if you have a pee pad on the floor when you start your trip and if the puppy starts to whine and want to come out of the carrier or if he's on your lap and starts to try to get off your lap then you just put him on the pee pad He'll circle around right away, do his little business, and then you pick him up, you pick up the pee pad, put it in the Ziploc bag, and then the, um, the puppy should be fine. If he starts to squirm again, he might need to go number two. So I'll have your pee pad on the floor ready to go for that, and then you put him down. And so just that's why having some uh, a friend with you on the trip is so great, especially if it's a long trip, because then... You just keep driving and that puppy doesn't need anything special. You don't need to pull off the road. He, ha You have what you need. So, um, so that's what I've done when I've had like eight hour trips with puppies or something like that. Um, I just, uh, you know, had someone become with me so that I could easily put the puppy down on the pee pad. Um, the other thing that you will need on a longer trip is, so I, I do send home with you in your bag um, the uh, puppy puppy blanket, which is a comfort to the puppy. I also have the food in here, and it's dry food. And I'll usually send a syringe, so you can syringe water into the puppy's mouth um, if you think that he's not eating. So here's a little syringe. Just remember, you put it in the cheek if you want to put a little water. This is like Three, two teaspoons or a teaspoon or something. A tablespoon, I think it is. Um, you just put it in the cheek. Don't shoot it straight down because you don't want water going into the puppy's lungs. So um, this is a good way when you're on a trip just to make sure your puppy's hydrated. You don't give them several of these, just one, a little one every now and then if you're concerned because they can get really hydrated when they're traveling. And then I send this puppy food that's wet with people who have long, long drives so that you have something that's very easy to feed your puppy so that they can eat a little something because they should eat a little something on the road to make sure that um, they don't get dehydrated. So now if you're on the plane, then you have to be also very thoughtful. Of course, when you're on the plane, you're gonna have your carrier. Call your airline or you don't have to call, look online, find out what the specifications are. Uh, as far as, you know, every airline's a little different, how long, how uh, high, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so make sure your carrier will fit their specifications because they are very particular. Uh, their specifications will 
align with how much space there is under your seat. So that's why they have these requirements so that they are sure that your carrier and your puppy will sit, fit under your seat. Um, because when you're traveling, um, you, you, your puppy has to stay, you, you agree with the airline that your puppy will stay under the seat. So I have a few little pee pads that I'm gonna have in the side pocket for this puppy. And I'm taking a plane ride tomorrow to Idaho with one of my puppies. So this is all I'm getting ready right now. I'm putting this plastic bag in there in case puppy has an accident. I do have a uh, transfer in Denver. So I fly from Virginia to Denver and then we have a transfer to another plane. So I'm thinking, you know, that'll be a good opportunity, hopefully for the puppy to get out of his carrier and I'll take him to the bathroom, put the pee pad down. Um, have the puppy on a leash and hopefully the puppy can go potty before he gets back on the plane which is what happened when I went to Seattle so the puppy went potty right before he got on the plane to Seattle and that was perfect because I didn't have any potty accidents in the carrier um, so but I, I will put a pee pad at the bottom of the carrier so that if he does have an accident there it's easy enough to, to pick up and then um, a couple other things let's see where did I put those okay yeah, having a chew toy is a good idea just in case the puppy wants to chew while he's on the road. And I'm going to bring a little puppy Kong and put the food in that so that I can just put it in there and then the puppy can sort of, you know, work on that and keep him distracted while he's on the airplane. So um, those are just a couple ideas. Of course, you can't put so much stuff in here. I mean, it's not all that big, but you'd be surprised. Puppies are quite small and they... There's actually a lot of room in there for a little puppy. So I'm going to put those in there right now. So I'm ready to go. So the other way um, that we prepare for traveling with a puppy is what I do here. Is uh, before I take the puppy on the road, I will make sure that the puppy has been fed in plenty of time. Like probably about 30 to 40 minutes before I take the puppy on a trip. I'm making sure he's fed and hydrated and then I'll let him run around. That last 30 minutes, I let the puppy run around. And so that's why it's really important. Like I make a schedule for pickup for the puppies and I ask that the customers try to be here on time because the, I'm preparing for your trip so that you have the most success. So the big dogs, the mama dogs are all gonna be put in the basement so they're not barking and creating a ruckus when you walk in the door because I wanna be able to talk to you. Um, or if you're picking up your puppy, then we don't want you know you don't want that either um so yeah so i i have had the puppies you know i, I schedule them so that they're going to be taking their nap when you are on the road <laughs> you don't want them to be needing to eat and potty right at the time you leave so that's why keeping your schedule is pretty important um, i usually give a 30 minute increment for each customer if you've got a longer drive or if you're coming up between washington dc and i-95 be aware that that's a high traffic area and you may, it's very common for there to be slowdowns. Plus when you get off the interstate, the area between the interstate and my house is very thick with traffic the later you get in the day. So I do recommend with people who have long drives, um, in, obviously plane trips as well, they, um, they leave early. You, you pick up your puppy so you're gonna be um, leaving as early as possible. Um, now, if you're on the, if you're drop, if you're flying with your puppy, I meet you at the airport, and typically I recommend a Tuesday for picking up your puppy. Monday or Tuesdays, um, that's my bird clock. Always likes to interrupt <laughs> my videos. Um, so Monday and Tuesdays are the quietest days at the airport. There's, um, if you go to Richmond, which is the preferred airport, it's very calm, very quiet. There's a area there it just has gone very smoothly um, Washington DC is a lot more congested a lot more security a lot more trouble if you go to Reagan so that I mean I can do that it's just uh, it takes a little more time and it's and there's more fees involved there's parking fees and all that but Richmond's free parking and it's just easy so I meet people there usually between 10 and 11 on a Tuesday if you're flying for you to fly in, get your puppy, and fly right out. And so a lot of people do that. I've had people come from San Francisco. I've had people come from um, 
from Florida. I think the San Francisco person though met me at Reagan because that was harder to get the connection. But I'm flying to um, Idaho tomorrow and I'm leaving out of Richmond. My flight takes off at 8.30 and I'm going to arrive in Idaho around two. And so that's gonna be fun. So anyway, um, yeah. So I hope that that helps you to be prepared. Uh, the puppies typically do very well on their trip. Last summer I went to Seattle with a puppy. Um, it was great because it was kind of like still night, the puppy was sleeping, I picked the puppy up, carried the puppy, my husband drove me to the airport. As soon as I got to the airport, put a pee pad down in the bathroom, the puppy went potty, we got on the plane, it was just so smooth. And the puppy did cry a little bit when, during the takeoff, it was like, you know, that big rumbling time when it's very distressing for everybody, really. <laughs> um, and he cried a little bit, but then he settled down and he was very good on the trip. So that's been our experience. The eight week puppies fly very well. So anyway, so don't think that that's a, a big deal. I don't send puppies um, in the um, cargo of the airplane. Some breeders do that, I don't. But um, so I just want you to be aware of that. Um, and so yeah, hopefully that helps you be prepared to have what you need when you're picking up your puppy. I'm excited for you to get your puppy and to meet you. We'll see you soon, bye bye.